Hello everyone. Today's video is going to be a quick video where I show you how to use the Fetch API built into the browser in order to make asynchronous requests to different network resources by using git, post, put, whatever it is that you want to use. So let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. And to get started, I have just a simple JavaScript page open on the right hand side, which is open the console on the right hand side. So everything that we put inside of this left side, as you can see, is going to be acted upon in the right hand side. So whatever we do over here, we can see the result of over on the right. And to get started, as I mentioned, we're going to be using the fetch API, and we're just going to be hitting this fake API, which is going to give us back some fake data. So this is going to, for example, give us all the users inside of this API, or we can just get a single user, for example. And the way the fetch API works is you pass it a URL as the first property, and then it has a second property, which is optional. And this is all of the different options that you want to pass to it, such as if you want to do a post request instead of a get request, you're going to need to use these options. But to get started, we're not going to use any options with fetch, and we're just going to log this out to see exactly what we're getting returned. So we'll say console.log of fetch, and if we save that, you see that we're getting a promise on the side here. So we know that fetch is promise based, which means that we can use async await, or we can use dot then and dot catch with it. And if you're not familiar with promises or async await, I have links in the description and in the cards that you can check out those videos that I've made on both of those topics. So to get started, what we need to do is we need to say dot then, and fetch is going to return to us a response. So we have a response object, and we're just going to log out that response object to see exactly what this looks like. And if we save that, you see we get a response that says that the status was 200, says status text is empty, OK is true, so we know that this was successful, and it has a body, which is going to be all of our data. But this body of data is actually not accessible directly from the response object we need to call a method on it to convert this response to JSON, since we're actually using JSON data. So what we need to do is say res.json, and this is going to return another promise. So then we need to use dot then again, and this is going to be our actual data. And we can say console.log of that data. So as you can see, we have all of the different data on the right hand side here. It has page numbers as well as all the different users that we're getting from the API. And that's working great, everything's looking good. But what happens if we want to get a single user? And for example, we're going to get user 23, which does not exist. So we're going to get a 404 status back. And when we save this, you're going to see that our get request actually happened, but we still ran our successful dot then code, even though we had a 404 being returned. You would think that since a 404 is an error, that it would end up in a catch statement like this, where we have an error, and then we would just want to log some text that says error, for example, you can see we're not getting any error text. And that's because the way fetch works, even though we're getting a 404 response, which is a failure of a response, fetch always succeeds no matter what, unless there's some form of network error where the actual browser has a hard time connecting to the internet. The only time you're gonna get a failure is if you have a failure with fetch itself and not with the API you're calling. So what you need to do is inside of your response, you wanna check to make sure the response is okay. So inside of here, what we can do is we can say if res.ok, then we know we had a successful response. We're just gonna, for example, console.log success. Else, if it's not successful, we're just gonna say something else. We're just gonna say not successful. There we go. And now if we save that, you can see we get not successful because this was a 404 response. But if we go back to our other example, which worked, you can see we now are getting the success response being returned because it is an okay response. Essentially, it's in the 200 level status codes between 200 and 299. Now that's good and all, but with fetch, many times you want to do more than just get data from the server. You actually want to post data to a server, update data, delete data. And in order to do that, you're going to need to use the options section of the fetch method. And the first thing we need to do is pass in a method. This can be either git, post, put, delete. It's just one of the HTTP methods. So in our case, we're going to use post. We're going to create a new user at this API by just doing a post request. And then what we need to do is we need to actually pass the data for that user. And that's going to go inside of the body. And we're going to pass that as JSON. 
So let's just come in here and give the user a name and we can just say user one is the name and we can tidy up this code here. We can return just res.json, make sure we return that. And there we go. Now, if we save this, you're gonna immediately notice it's not going to work. We got our data back and it looks like it works, but as you can see, there's no name for our user. It didn't actually save our user properly because this body didn't get sent up correctly. The way that fetch works is you actually need to send it JSON. So you need to do json.stringify and actually stringify the object that you're passing it just like this. Now, if we save that, you're again still gonna notice the name is not here, so it's still not working. And that's because you also need to set the headers. Essentially, you need to tell fetch that you're going to be passing JSON. So we're gonna pass it an object, and inside this object, we can set the content type, and we wanna set that to application slash JSON. And now if we save it, you can see we're correctly getting a user with that name. So we're actually creating a real user with the name from our body. And the main thing you need to remember when doing anything with JSON data that you're posting to the server is you need to make sure you set the header to the correct content type of application JSON, and you also need to stringify the body. So you can't just send a JavaScript object, you have to convert it to a JSON string. And that's something that trips up a lot of people when they're first messing with fetch. And that's really all there is to the fetch API. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.